Hello, hello everybody. It's so nice to have you back again today. My name is Leah and this is my channel where we talk about all things fashion. So today, if you couldn't tell by my location, we're going to be doing another sewing video. So I have these jeans that I showed y'all in my thrift haul video and they are way too big for me and I need to take them in at the waist. So I'm going to be taking y'all with me as I try to fix these. Just a reminder that I am still new to sewing. So you guys are coming with me as I learn and hopefully you learn some stuff that you could apply as well. So yeah, let's get into it. So the very first thing I did, obviously, was to try on the jeans and mark how much I needed to take in for them to fit my waist. At first, I had tried to gather all the extra fabric at the back and measure it, but that didn't work. So what I did instead was to pull out the fabric on either side and put a safety pin to mark where I wanted it to fit. Then, I took off the jeans and measured the sections from where I placed the pins to see exactly how much I needed to take in the jeans. I'm going to be sewing with the fabric folded anyway, so I just measured on the folded edge and it turned out to be 3 inches on each side, so 6 inches in total folded, which would actually be 12 inches of fabric. So my plan from there was to take in as much as possible on the side seams and then the rest I would take in on the middle back seam. The next thing I did after that was to take off the three belt loops at the back of the pants. I'm taking them off so they don't get in the way while I'm sewing and I'm going to reposition them and put them back on after I'm done. Also, just a note, I much prefer using a razor blade to a seam ripper when I'm undoing seams. It takes way less effort and it's way quicker. But, a warning, if you're gonna use a razor blade, just be careful as you're getting used to it because you might accidentally slice through your fabric and we don't want that. While I'm doing all of this, I'm listening to this podcast called Potterless that I'm currently obsessed with and if you are my friend or follow me on Twitter, you already know about this. In this video, you can see that I'm on episode 2 and now in real life as I'm recording this, I'm on episode like 30 something. It's so good, so entertaining, and if you're a fan of Harry Potter, I totally recommend you check it out. Hello again, boys and girls. And you must be wondering, why have I changed my clothes? Are we here another night for a project that really should have taken less than an hour? And well, yes. So what happened was... I was about to get into the fixing process, fix those jeans up, move on with my life, but I realized there were some of those little rivets on the jeans, the metal ones, and they would have gotten in my way of trying to sew where I wanted to sew, and considering the fact that I'm on my very last needle for my sewing machine, um, I needed to get those removed, and it was 2am, and I couldn't do it by my own strength. So I had to wait till today to get my dad to take them off for me. But now they are gone and we are ready to go. Just to recap, I'm going to be taking in as much as I can from the side seams. I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the pockets without, you know, getting in their way. And then the rest I will take from the middle back seam. So let's go. Jumping back in before the actual sewing. I also removed the mini pocket that was inside the pocket. You know what I'm talking about. I was sad to lose it, but I would have had to sew over it anyway, so it had to go, unfortunately. Next, I measured an inch and three quarters in from the original seam and made a mark on the waistband. Then I went 11 inches down the seam and added a mark there. Then I drew a line connecting the two marks, so the line that I would stitch along would gradually taper into the original seam. Then I made sure the original seam sat perfectly flat and pinned it up. Did this to both sides, then it was time to sew. 
So I started to sew up the jeans and everything was going great until my needle broke. Fortunately, I found a couple more needles from my mother's old sewing machine and I was able to use one of those and can I just say that they were so much stronger than the ones that came with my machine. After that, I was just sewing over seams smooth like butter, no problem at all, which is just to prove things definitely aren't made as durable now as they used to be. Anyway. After that, I tried them on, and to my great surprise, they fit perfectly. So I didn't have to take in from the back seam again, and I went ahead and cut off the extra fabric on the sides. Next thing after that was to hem the bottom, which was just a bit too long for me. I measured how long I wanted them to be off camera, and did some quick mats to figure out how much to hem them up. I did it like that because I figured it would be easier to measure up from the bottom and I would get a more even length on both sides um, than if I were to measure from the top of the jeans. I just drew a line where I wanted the new length to be and I cut off the excess and hemmed the jeans. Tried them on one more time to make sure everything was right and proper. At this point, I think it looks so great and I am so pleased with myself. Then the last thing was to put back on the belt loops. I just decided to go with two instead of the three, so I placed them each three inches out from the middle seam and pinned them down. I'm gonna be honest, sewing those belt loops truly kicked my butt. Even the stronger, older needles from my mother's machine were no match for these belt loops made of steel. I ended up breaking another needle, and I didn't want to risk the last one, so I just decided to hand sew the belt loops off camera. And that was it. It was done.
So here we are again at the end of it all. And to wrap up this video, I'm just going to give you guys my little review of how things went, what I would do differently, and what I would recommend. The biggest thing that I didn't expect to happen was after I just took in an inch and three quarters from each of the side seams, that it fit perfectly after that. When I had originally measured six inches total on the fold of extra fabric. So I think my biggest lesson there was try things on as you go and don't do everything and then try it on because if I had done that I might have made the jeans too tight and I would have probably messed up this back seam. Because of the type of finish that the back seam has it would have been really difficult to emulate that and I'm sure that I would have made all sorts of mistakes there so I'm really happy I didn't have to take out the back seam and redo it for sure. One flaw that I kind of noticed and you may have as well in the try on is that there's a bit of puckering on the side of the seams where my stitch meets the original stitch and I think that is probably my mistake. I didn't line it up properly but I think what I might do to fix that if it continually bothers me is just run another stitch slightly on the inside of the original one to create a new side seam going down the side so it flows smoothly. But if I were to do it again, I think what I would do is bring down the point where it meets the original seam even lower so that it's kind of a more gradual tapering because this one is kind of, the angle is a little harsh if I look at it. So I would definitely do that differently. But overall, I'm so pleased with how these came out. I am so proud of myself and I really can't wait to start fixing all my jeans for real. So guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for coming all this way with me. If you liked, leave a like. Leave a comment letting me know what your ideal pair of jeans is. Make sure to share with your friends as well and subscribe to see more. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye.